I'm here with uh, Jeffrey D. Sachs, world-renowned economist and director of the Earth Institute uh, at Columbia University. And this is the reason why we're here today. You are also the director of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which we're launching here today in Germany. Welcome. Thank you very much. Professor Sachs, uh, in a few words, what are the most uh, important goals of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network? This is an initiative of UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon to try to find and promote rapidly practical solutions to sustainable development. We've been talking a lot about sustainable development for a quarter century or more, but unfortunately we haven't been going in the direction of sustainable development. How, as a world that's now integrated in trade and finance and technology and production and migration, how do we move quickly to decarbonize the energy system? How do we make our global food supply more resilient, especially in an age of climate shocks? How do we make our cities more resilient to the kinds of storms and extreme floods and heat waves that have been experienced by so many cities, including my own New York City, this past November with Superstorm Sandy? These are what we're looking for in this new global network. So we've been talking about it for decades, but in your opinion, what are the most pressing issues for the next, let's say, 10 to 20 years when it comes to the challenges that we're facing, mainly in the developing countries? Certainly, uh, combining economic development with uh, lower greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, how do we have economic growth continuing, especially in the developing countries, but not wreck the planet through climate change? This is puzzle number one. Second, uh, with a growing world population, how do we feed planet adequately, especially since our food supply is now being hit almost every year by heat waves, by droughts, by floods, tremendous uh, loss of food crops in the United States down 20% last year because of a mega drought, uh, but we've had mega droughts uh, and heat waves that have hurt the global supply uh, in Russia, in Ukraine, in other grain exporting regions. So how do we feed the planet? in a secure way. And then given the fact that we are now a world that lives uh, more than half of the population in cities, that will go up to around 70% by 2030. How do we make our cities healthy, viable, resilient, uh, adapting to the climate change which is going to take place? Uh, how do we have uh, sustainable cities? These are the biggest challenges. Everywhere in the world, uh, countries, metropolitan areas are going to have to solve their own problems by and large. And so one of the things the network aims to do is to empower local problem solving, especially by bringing universities around the world into a global network and helping the universities that are working locally with the information coming from best practices around the world. You just mentioned uh, sustainable cities. Now, uh, when we look at the, let's say, uh, nearer future, Uh, we're talking about the post-2015 agenda, uh, and we do have the MDGs. So does that mean that instead we should talk about sustainable development goals, like uh, we have been talking at Rio Plus 20? And uh, what does this mean? Uh, goals that apply to the North and the South, is that the way to go? The Rio Plus 20 summit last June was a sober meeting. Uh, of course, tens of thousands of people came to the world's government were represented. The reason it was sobering was that in 1992 we had the glorious Earth Summit and great treaties came out of that on climate change, on biodiversity, on fighting desertification. Twenty years later, uh, those treaties were still there, but there wasn't a lot to show for them. One of the important outcomes of last year's meeting, therefore, was to say we need not only those treaties, we need to mobilize the global public. We need public participation in all parts of the world to understand what this is all about and help lead far more rapid transformation. So the governments adopted the idea of Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. I like the concept, MDGs to SDGs. So as 2015 comes, lots of progress will have been made under the Millennium Development Goals to fight poverty. The SDGs, I believe, will start from there 
SDG number one will be complete the fight against extreme poverty by 2030 and extreme poverty in all its forms. That means income poverty, hunger poverty, lack of access to uh, primary health care, fight disease. But we're going to have to do more than that. Decarbonize the energy system, make the food supply resilient, make our cities more resilient. And so that's what the sustainable development goals will be about, combining the imperative to end extreme poverty with more attention to social inclusion, uh, in other words, more equal societies, through less discrimination and a more widespread gain of knowledge and skills. And the third area is to make all that economic progress environmentally sustainable, something we have absolutely not achieved to this point, you know, almost at all, unfortunately. So these will be universal goals? I believe that the world will adopt sustainable development goals or something quite like that, that they will apply to rich and poor countries. They won't be legally binding. This isn't meant to be a treaty. It's meant to be an inspiration, a call to action, a, a, an awakening of the worldwide public. I want those SDGs to be known by 12-year-olds all around the world. I want a homework assignment for a sixth grader. Why are the sustainable development goals important for Cameroon? Why are they important for Vietnam? Why are they important for Uruguay? These are the uh, ways that will get the entire world galvanized to actually take on what has to be faster and deeper transformation than anything that humanity uh, has directed up until this point. Professor Zaks, thank you so much for joining us today and for these interesting thoughts. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's my great pleasure to be here today launching the Sustainable Development Solution.